I'd like to begin with a big thanks to all those who have subscribed over the past two weeks. The recent influx of new viewers has been unexpected but very gratifying and has helped a great deal in my quest to increase the profile of this channel, so thank you. Now on to the reason you are here. This is the third and final part of a series that attempts to determine which two races will be in the final Lord Pack for Warhammer 2. In the first episode, we established our list of criteria and tested the Game 1 races against them, calculating a top three which included the Beastmen, the Dwarves and the Vampire Counts. In our second video, we took the same criteria and tested the Game 2 races and established a short list of three races, the Dark Elves, the Lizardmen and the Skaven. In this final instalment, we will use the same criteria, plus two additional ones, in an effort to take those six races and determine the two that will go head to head. So let's start by refreshing our memories by looking at our previous criteria and introducing our new ones. First, there is necessity. Does the race need a rework and a slot in this final Lord Pack? Secondly, we have demand. Is there a demand from the community for the race to get new content? Thirdly, is the Vortex. Quite simply, is the race in the Vortex campaign? Fourth, we have source material. Does the race have enough source material in its most recent edition army book for a satisfying Lord Pack? Fifth, what additions have been made to the game in the last few patches that may hint at the race receiving content? Our first new criteria, how much development effort would be required to add the race to the Lord Pack and do them justice? Some races need more work than others, and this could be a factor with the upcoming release of Warhammer 3 and the pre-order race pack. The final criteria, have there been any comments from Creative Assembly, explicit or cryptic, that would increase or reduce the odds for a certain race? So there we have our criteria. Let's look at our list of candidates. In alphabetical order, we have the Beastmen, the Dark Elves, the Dwarves, the Lizardmen, the Skaven, and the Vampire Counts. On to our first criteria. Necessity. Of our candidates, which are in need of an update before Game 3. We start with the Beastmen, and if there was ever a case for a race receiving an update, the Beastmen are it. They have been waiting patiently for a rework, as race after race have been reworked, and they remain pretty much untouched. While they are enjoyable on the battlefield, their campaign mechanics are in need of an overhaul, especially when it comes to the Horde mechanic. Next, we have the Dark Elves, who currently have one less Lord than the other Game 2 races, as they currently sit on five. They have a decent roster, and are enjoyable to play on the battlefield, with some great units though the campaign mechanics are in need of an overhaul, as are the mechanics of some of their lords. Malice, I'm looking at you, mate. The third of our candidates is the Dwarves. They have received an Old World update, and while it was great at the time, they have fallen behind the pack and find themselves in need of a helping hand to even the odds. Their Old World update mechanics, while good, were taken directly from the Tomb Kings, and it would be nice to see them get something that is purely for them. Candidate number four is the Lizardmen. They are currently in a good position with six lords and a great roster of infantry and monsters. They do, however, have one flaw, their mechanics. They are definitely in need of an update for their geomantic web. Next is the Skaven. They do not need an update as they have just received their third lord pack in the Twisted and the Twilight. They have the most variety in their lords and the most interesting mechanics, and their roster is fun to play. The final candidate is the Vampire Counts, who have also received their Old World update, and are in a good spot. They could do with some more interesting mechanics, but nothing is really broken. They also have a varied and fun roster that puts them in good stead. So from our first criteria, we see the Beastmen, the Dark Elves, Dwarves and Lizardmen who are in need of updates of one form or another. So on to the second criteria. Demand. Is the community asking for the race to receive content? There are always those who will want new content for their favourite race, and that is completely understandable. 
but how much attention is being paid to our finalists? The Beastmen seem to be the top dog here, which is a completely new position for the Cloven Ones. The race has been in need of an update for quite some time, and some popular content creators have been quite vocal about this fact. But will Creative Assembly finally give them some love? The Dark Elves seem to have their backers, who want the race fixed as they believe they have been neglected under the red-headed stepchild of Game 2. While they have been in several Lord Packs, they seem to end up getting the short end of the stick in those packs. The Dwarves are getting some requests for updates to their mechanics and roster, mostly since the release of the Warden and the Pawns and the Greenskins getting their update. I personally believe we won't see the Dwarves again until Game 3, even though they are one of my favourite races. The fourth candidate is the Lizardmen, who are the quiet horse in the race. They have a few calls for them to receive more content, but mostly, their name is brought up because many feel that the Dark Elves just don't have enough content to warrant a place in the Lord Pack. Next, we have the Skaven, who are a very popular race indeed, having received three Lord Packs in which they got most of the goodies. There were some calling for them to get more content, as they still have so much to offer, but that content will likely be safe for Game 3. While their fans are vocal, it won't have much of an effect on this Lord Pack I believe. Onto the Vampire Counts. They certainly have a group pushing for the undead to walk the earth once more, and it has been a long time since they received an update. Perhaps they are due more content, though I tend to think they will get their content in Game 3 as well. Taking stock. The Beastmen are the clear winners, while the other races are seeing demand to a lesser degree. The Lizardmen is not so much direct demand, just attention as an alternate to the Dark Elves. So on to the third criteria. Is the race currently playable on the Vortex campaign? We see the Game 2 races, the Dark Elves, the Lizardmen, and the Skaven, all with multiple starting positions. Though the Dark Elves do find themselves with one less spot than their Game 2 brethren. The Game 1 races, the Beastmen, the Dwarves, and the Vampire Counts are all in need of a spot on the Vortex campaign. Our fourth criteria is source material. Does the race have enough content for a spot in the Lord Pack? For this criteria, we will limit ourselves to the race's most recent edition army book and the Monstrous Arcanum to answer this question. The Beastmen are missing some core lords, like Gorthor, Torox the Brass Bull, and Moonclaw. They are also missing some of their big ticket models, which would be a very good draw card for the Lord Pack should they be included. Creatures like the Jabberslythe, the Gorgon, and perhaps even the Proton would help move product. The Dark Elves have a few characters yet to be added. From the 8th edition army book, there is Shadowblade, Koran Darkhand, and Talaris Dreadbringer. The generic Black Ark Fleetmaster is also currently missing from the game. Their biggest issue is that their core roster has all been used and some believe that even in the last Lord Pack, they were scraping the bottom of the barrel. The Dwarves are missing some fantastic Lords from their 8th edition army book. Thoric Ironbrow, Grim Burlickson, and Joseph Bugman. From the army book though, there is little to draw from in the way of units. A lot of the remaining models for the Dwarves would have to come from other sources, and the monstrous Arcanum only has the Shard Dragon to offer. Much like other races so far, the Lizardmen are missing a number of Lords from their 8th edition army book. We have Teto Iko, the Chameleon Skink Oxyotl, and the Eternity Warden Chakax, though he is most likely hero material. Most of their roster have already been used, but they do have the Troglodon that is yet to be included. The Skaven are missing a few characters, Thanquil and Bone Ripper, Screech Vermin King, Nurglitch, and Squeal Nortooth. Their roster in-game is currently very fleshed out, but they are also missing Plague Rats, Giant Rats, Storm Fiends, along with the Exalted Vermin Lords from the Monstrous Arcanum. Lastly is the Vampire Counts, who are missing a few things from their 8th edition army book. In my first video, I claimed that they were missing nothing. It seems that even with my glasses, I'm as blind as a bat, as I completely missed several units. Thanks to Raptore, 
for pointing out that I missed Spirit Hosts, Abyssal Terrors, and the Coven of Thrones. So we have the Dark Elves and the Dwarves missing several Lords, but no 8th edition units to draw from. In the opposite corner are the Vampire Counts, who are missing a few units, but all their 8th edition Lords are already in the game. The Lizardmen have a number of Lords and their Troglodon from which they could draw, and the Beastmen and Skaven have plenty of Lords and units to choose from. On to the fifth criteria, additions. What changes have been made to the game that may hint at a race being about to receive new content? I am unable to find any recent changes that hint at content for the Dark Elves, the Dwarves, the Lizardmen, or the Skaven. There were some additional voice lines for the Beastmen a few patches back, though I'll be damned if I can find the post where I read that. The most clear evidence of recent changes that could point to content for one of our races would likely be the addition of the Silver Pinnacle in the Darklands. It could be hinting at Neferata coming to the game for the Vampire Counts. Now for the first of our new criteria, development effort. How much development effort would be required to bring the race with the expected changes to the Lord Pack? It has previously been stated that new models with new rigging and animations require a lot of effort, and that entire mechanical reworks would also fall into the major effort bracket. So the Beastmen are clearly in need of the biggest rework mechanically, and their missing monsters, like the Jabberslythe and Gorgon, may be time consuming to create to CA standards. I believe they could be considered to be quite a large development effort and may find themselves pushed back to Game 3 as a result. We can see the Dark Elves, the Dwarves and the Lizard Men's mechanics are all in need of reworks, but the amount of work to fix them would be far less than that of the Beastmen. The amount of work on models would likely be less too, though with the Dark Elves it's hard to be sure as we have no idea what they would add. The Skaven and the Vampire Counts don't need a rework, though I imagine tweaks would be made, so it would just be a matter of adding the new models and the Lord specific mechanic. The development effort would be less, but not by a significant margin. On to the final criteria. Has Creative Assembly made any comments that might increase or decrease the chances of a particular race being included in the Lord Pack? Well, there are a few that may have some bearing on the races we see. Creative Assembly said on a live stream for the Twisted and the Twilight release that they strive to have each Game 2 Lord Pack contain at least one Game 2 race. So for our Game 2 candidates, the Dark Elves, the Lizardmen, and the Skaven, this could be seen as a plus. They have also stated in the past that they would like to have six Legendary Lords for each of the core Game 2 races. As the Dark Elves are the only core Game 2 race with 5, this could be seen as an indicator of their inclusion. And when combined with the previous statement, it would seem unlikely they would be the FLC. Some time ago, I believe it was on another livestream, it was mentioned that Creative Assembly would love to see some more Beastmen in Nagarond. This may have just been a personal preference of the person who said it, or it could have been an indication that they intend to move one of the existing Lords. Or it could have been a sly hint at a new Beastman faction being added as a thorn in the side of the Dark Elves. I am unaware of any other comments that have been made regarding our candidate races. If there have been some, please let me know in the comments section. So time to get out the abacus and calculate the scores. Much like previous videos, we will assign a score of 1 if a race passes a criteria, a score of 0 if they fail, and half a point if they are borderline. Looking at the first criteria, Necessity. We see the Dark Elves and Beastmen in most need of attention. As such, they both score 1. The Dwarves and the Lizardmen each require some changes, so they score half a point. The Skaven and Vampire Counts don't have any pressing need for a rework at this time, so they both score zero. Our second criteria, is there a demand for a race from the community? We see the Beastmen with the most vocal advocates, and thus they will score one. The remaining races are all at similar levels of demand, and each score half a point. Thirdly, 
is the race in the Vortex map. Here we see the Beastmen, the Dwarves and the Vampire Counts all missing a position on the Vortex map so they each score one. The Dark Elves do have several starting positions but not as many as other core races from game two so they will score half a point. The Lizardmen and the Skaven will each score zero. The fourth criteria, does the race have enough Lords and Units to build a Lord Pack around? The Beastmen and Skaven have the most to work with, so they will receive one point. The remaining races all have something to work with, whether it's a Lord or several units, so they all score half a point. Next, have there been any additions to the game that might hint at a race receiving new content? The Beastmen and the Vampire Counts are the only races which have received some hint, so they will score half a point each. Our sixth criteria, how much development effort is required? The Dark Elves, the Dwarves, the Lizardmen, the Skaven and the Vampire Counts each score half a point, as their development effort would be unlikely to vary too wildly. The Beastmen, however, would likely require more development effort, so they will score zero. Finally, has Creative Assembly made any comments that increase or decrease the odds of a race being included? Well, there have been several comments that could be seen as favourable for the Beastmen and the Dark Elves, and to a lesser degree, the Lizardmen and the Skaven. As a result, we will give these races half a point. There have been no comments that I am aware of which would increase the odds of the Dwarves or the Vampire Counts, so they will score zero. When we look at the final results, we see the following. In last place, tied with two and a half, we have the Lizardmen and the Skaven, unlikely to get one of the spots. In joint third place, we see the Dwarves and the Vampire Counts with three points. Second place goes to the remaining Game 2 race, the Dark Elves, getting past the Dwarves and Vampires by a hair. That leaves the Beastmen with first place, screaming home with an impressive five points. So what does this all mean? If Creative Assembly think with the same strange and twisted logic as myself, and consider the same criteria, then we have a good chance of seeing the Beastmen and the Dark Elves match up in the final Lord Pack with the Dwarves and the Vampire Cans being good alternatives. So, what do you think? Do you think we will see the Beastmen versus the Dark Elves facing off in Nagarond? It's not my personal preference, but it would be interesting to see what Creative Assembly could do with such a matchup. I'd like to thank you for joining me, and if you liked the video, please consider subscribing. I'd love to grow the channel, and I need your help to do so. A quick shout out to Hot Apple Pie for their continued support, it means a great deal. I'm Grey Tiger, and I'll catch you next time.